Time having arrived, I call the uh, January 21st 7 p.m. Finance Committee meeting to order. Councilors, before we go into the agenda, I wanted to just give a few uh, pieces of information. Mayor Carpenter is at the uh, Mayor's Conference in Washington, D.C. this week. So uh, as role as the City Council President, I'm the Acting Mayor. I did speak to Mayor Carpenter this morning. I've spoken to his Chief of Staff, Bob Buckley, at least a uh, half dozen times uh, relative to the snow. So I have some uh, information I think is important to everyone here and those watching on TV. Uh, City Hall will be closed tomorrow. Uh, so uh, if you're employed at City Hall, you don't have uh, to come in tomorrow. Uh, schools, public schools in the City of Brockton are closed tomorrow. Trinity Catholic Academy in Brockton is also closed tomorrow. Uh, plowing, pre-treating did start earlier today, counselors, uh, but the, uh, the plows will begin at 8 o'clock uh, to jump in uh, so that the heavy snow is forecasted between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. Uh, the emergency parking ban has been called by Mayor Carpenter. It is in effect as of 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, and no rubbish pickup tomorrow. Now, this is extremely important because of the fact that yesterday's was the holiday, so no pickup happened yesterday, Monday, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, rubbish pickup for Monday happened today. Tuesday's pickup, which will be scheduled for tomorrow, will not happen tomorrow. So what they're doing to pick up Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they're going to be picking up one hour earlier to try to catch up. So those that were supposed to be uh, picked up tomorrow will be picked up Thursday. Uh, the Wednesday regular schedule will be picked up Friday. The Thursday regular schedule will be picked up Saturday. And also, they're also going to try to double down for those that were supposed to be picked up Friday. If there's any overflow or they missed a street or two, they will uh, make sure Monday morning an hour early to get everything. So as of Monday, they will be caught up to speed. But again, no rubbish pickup tomorrow. A um, couple other pieces of information. Again, uh, Councilor, uh, Councilor Lodge Rodriguez, again, as I uh, exclaimed last week, is out of the country traveling. Uh, he will be here at Monday night's uh, full city council meeting. Uh, and then the DPW Commissioner, uh, Mike Thorson, had indicated to me earlier this week via uh, written correspondence. Unfortunately, he's unable to attend uh, our FinCon meeting tonight. Uh, councils, before we go into the agenda item, I also would like to take a, a moment of silence. Again, we lost a real Brocktonian, a real icon. Uh, his funeral was yesterday. Uh, former Fire Chief uh, Edward Sonny uh, Burrell uh, passed away. Again, he was the, uh, the last surviving uh, firefighter for uh, our city that fought at the Strand in 1941. So if we could, out of respect to him and his service, and out of respect to his family, if we could give a moment of silence, please. May he rest in peace. Amen. Madam Clerk. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Council. Make a motion to take item 5 out of order. Second. Motion's been made. Probably second to take number 5 out of order. Uh, all in favor of that? All opposed? Motion carries. Number 5, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation $109,982.65 from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs Fiscal Year 2014 Formula Grant to the Council on Aging Elder Affairs Grant Fund. This grant is to be used for salaries including overtime, energy, department equipment, and repair, printing, office supplies, and registrations, memberships, and subscriptions. Invited John A. Conn, Chief Financial yes. Officer, Janice Fitzgerald, Director of Council on Aging. Mr. Fitzgerald, good evening. Good evening, Thank Council. you for being hardy and battling the snow to join us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to take one quick second here to um, let the newer councils know about this grant. This is a grant that we receive every year from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, um, and the funds are based on the number of elders that we have in the city, 60 years and older, from the 2010 census. Um, from that census, they told us that we have 15,883 elders, 60 and older. Um, and then they calculated $8 per elder, um, which that amount has gone up um, the last few <coughs> years. Uh, this doesn't require a match, and the funds, um, as were stated, are used for salaries, um, maintenance on equipment, office supplies, um, and energy costs. Council, any questions for Mrs. Fitzgerald? I, I have one. Council Hi. Bonds. Hey, good evening. Um, the memberships and subscriptions, memberships to what? We belong to, like, the Mass Council on Aging, the National Council on Aging, um, organizations like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Motion to recommend favorable. Second. Second. 
Motion has been made uh, favorably. Uh, it's been properly seconded. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. It's favorable. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Michel. Drive safely this evening. Madam Clerk, number one, please. Order appropriation $2,000 from the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Municipal Grant to the Refuse Department Recycling Containers Grant Fund to purchase an industrial grade paper shredder for residential use at the City of Brockton Recycling Depot at 300 Oak Hill Way. Invited John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, Michael Thorson, DPW Commissioner, Patrick Sullivan, Contract Administrator, Recycling Department. Mr. Sullivan, good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. You too. Uh, the grant that, that uh, we received was 2000, a small scale grant in order, the, um, the reason that we got the grant was to try to boost a little paper recycling, but also the main reason was to offer a place, uh, we, we get a lot of calls from residents who are looking to shred some of their personal documents. And uh, we've had a few shred days, which really haven't, uh, the stars have to line up for someone to need to do their shredding on, that, on a shred day. This will, we'll try to keep it down at the recycle center. It's for residential use and uh, we'll see what happens. But it's, uh, we're going to get the best shredder we can for $2,000 for the grant and, uh, and hopefully everyone will be, feel welcome to use it. Move to approve. Second. 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 Motions made. Properly seconded. Uh, move to favorably uh, approve. All in favor? All opposed, motion carries. Mr. Sullivan, thank you. Thank you. Drive carefully tonight. Madam Clerk, number two, please. Order appropriation totaling $14,404 from the Commonwealth of Mass Department of Public Safety, the fiscal year 2014 Student Awareness of Fire Education Grant to the Brockton Fire Department Fiscal 14 Student Awareness of Fire Education Grant Fund, $10,786. <coughs> and from the Commonwealth of Mass Department of Public Safety Fiscal Year 2014 Senior Awareness of Fire Education Grant to the Brockton Fire Department Fiscal 14 Senior Awareness of Fire Education Grant Fund, $3,618. This is a non-matching grant with no cost to the city. The Fire Department intends to use these grant funds for the Fire Safety Education Program. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and Richard C. Francis, Fire Chief. Good evening, Chief. If you could step forward. Thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, <coughs> this is the grant we get every year. Uh, <coughs> it's non-matching. This year we also have the additional uh, money for the seniors, which is a, a program that we kind of started our own a couple years ago and then the state, through their own wisdom, decided to uh, start funding it. Um, that allows us to do fire safety for the seniors. And we also have our regular program that does kindergarten, first and third grades in all the public schools and the private schools. That's great. Move to approve. Second. second. Uh, motions were made, properly seconded. It was a favorable recommendation. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Madam Clerk, number three, please. Order appropriation $608,223 from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Community Policing Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department EOPS Fiscal Year 14 Community Policing Grant Fund. These funds will be used for overtime for community policing beats, activities, call taker replacement, detective investigations, ride alongs, quality of life impact shifts, and grant fiscal management services. We invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Emmanuel C. Gomes, Police Chief. Mr. Conn, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. You're welcome. This is a yearly grant. We get uh, these funds every year for our community placing, and we'd ask that you'd accept it as primarily Vote used for approved. overtime. Second. Second. On the motion. On the motion, Councilor. Uh, this appropriation, this grant is 608000 uh, What did we get last year? Do you know? Off the top of my head, I would say about the same, but I don't remember the exact amount, Councilor. It's Essentially the same thing. this amount of money. So it's been level funded as <coughs> pretty much. Basically, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you have any questions for, the, uh, for Ms. Conner? No? It's been a favorable recommendation. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Mm -hmm. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Councilor. <coughs> Thank you. Madam Clerk, number four, please. Order. Transfer totaling $155,400 from the police full time, $133,000. The shift differential, $9,400. Weekend differential, $13,000. To the police overtime. This transfer is necessary to cover the anticipated overtime expenditures, projecting that they will continue at the same pace as they have to date. Okay. Invited Johnny Conn and Chief Financial Officer, Emmanuel C. Gomes, Police Chief. <coughs> Uh, Councilors, the uh, police department has informed us back at the end of December they were running out of overtime money, and so if we're to continue the staffing on overtime beats that we have in the past, they need to move this money into the overtime account. The source of the funding is basically from delays in hiring from anticipated hires earlier in the year. 
Move to approve. Second. Second. Uh, Question. Councilor Question. Dubois, followed by Councilor Bonds. Councilor Dubois. Hi, uh, Mr. Condon. Why wasn't this um, projected in the budget? I mean, we always <coughs> do do overtime. Did you project the typical overtime and the overtime costs have just exploded since we, then? Or we projected a level funded for overtime, and they've been using more. And you, s you said something about um, postponed hiring. What's that? No, uh, the budget anticipated hiring of officers in an earlier point in the year than they were able to. They need to do investigations and wait for a police academy to start, and they, they're, they're held subject to the start of the academy before they can put them on the payroll. How many officers are we talking about? Uh, I, I think there are eight, but I don't remember off the top of my head for sure. Um, and so th these costs are to fund people that are currently in their positions, not, not anticipated moves in the department or um, increased staffing levels. Am I correct? No, or is the, this these, these funds are to continue the rate of spending in the overtime uh, budget that has been expended to date for the staff that's on board. When you say to date, do you mean from when to when? This fiscal year. So July 1 to now? Yes. So six months. Right. So to date, have we spent around 100? How much have we spent to date on overtime? I don't have that information, Counselor. Okay. Um, could you get me that information before yes. we make a final vote on this yes. next week? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Council Bonds. Yes. Um, not sure if you can answer this, but this the the request for the money is for anticipated overtime expenditures so what happens if they don't use it what happens to the money if it does go over and it's kind of laying over you can't can call it? overtime you can't overtime is a separately appropriated uh, budget item so he can only spend what's in that account okay and if there isn't a uh, increase to that account before the end of the fiscal year they will run out of overtime money and they won't be able to call men out on overtime okay Thank so you. you'll, you'll, you'll lose the, the benefit of the overtime money if you don't, if you don't okay. supplement it. Thank you. Any further questions, Council Bonds? No, thank you. Councils, <coughs> any other questions? Entertain a motion. I'll move to approve. Second. Recommend favorably. Uh, motion's been made properly, second, favorable. All in favor of that? All motion. opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Garner. Uh, Madam Clerk, number six, please. Order floor. appropriation 11,000 from the city lots to building and grounds in order to fund the cleanup of an oil spill in the marketplace lot, including removal and disposal of hazardous materials and professional services to close the case with Mass DEP. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Robert H. Malley, Executive Director, Parking Authority. Mr. Malley, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Uh, what this is, back in September, we had a spill at the marketplace lot, uh, apparently cooking oil. It looks like a case of vandalism. It came from, uh, we believe it came from the Cristal restaurant. Uh, and it was dumped across the zebra down there. So per protocol, the fire department was notified. The fire department noticed, notified the DEP. Uh, we were required to get an LSP on site and have the thing cleaned up. So what this pays for is uh, oversight of the, of the cleanup, the uh, DEP paperwork, uh, lab testing, uh, and then review of the lab testing and then the closeout, uh, as well as the disposal itself. It breaks down to $8,700 for the LSP and $2,793 uh, for the company that did the cleanup. Councilor Staninsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Malley, what is the marketplace lot? Where is it located? Uh, it's behind, um, behind the Joe Angelos and Cristal and all that. It used to be the bus station. Thank you. Motion recommend favorably. Second. On the motion. On the motion, Dubois, Council Dubois. I'm sorry if I didn't hear you correctly, or maybe I mis misunderstood. But who caused this spill? Well, it it was reported to the police. It, it looks like vandalism. There was a barrel up uh, against the side of the building that had been emptied across the zebra. What's and the zebra? The, what uh, word is that? The the you know the patterned brick like we have out in City Hall Z Plaza. Z-brick. I'm Z -brick, sorry. Right. I didn't understand. Right. So behind Joe Angelo's, in, in the old Bapas terminal. But it was on city property. It was on city property. Mm -hmm. And since there are a couple restaurants, not just Joe Angelo's there, right. did you investigate to see if it's yes, one, we, of their one of their restaurants? And yeah, them yes, we did. We, we believe it came from Cristal, the Cristal restaurant, right? Okay. because that's where the barrel was. Okay. Right. But you can't prove anything. So you no. can't. Okay. No, and, and we did check with the people who uh, cleaned their, their uh, traps, and, and uh, they hadn't been out there. 
the, the owners knew nothing about it, right? It, it appears to be just a case of vandalism. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. Chair. Councilor Stewart. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Question on, uh, just and for me, this is, will probably become more of a normal question in terms of the city spending its uh, resources. Um, so this was done by a subcontractor, obviously, to clean up the, the spill, correct? Oh, yes, yeah. And is, is that firm located in Brockton or is it outside of Brockton? Are there firms in Brockton that can do this work? And how do we do the procurement around that? Actually, the, the firm was located in Stoughton, mm -hmm. right? And when we got to the spot of the spill, um, we were given two hours by the DEP to come up with an LSP. And he called everyone in the area, right? And the company that would respond and get this done right away was uh, Sin Energy out of Stoughton. Okay. And are there companies in Brockton that could have done this work that you know of? To be honest with you, the LSP did the calling mm -hmm. on this to, to find the, the uh, prices, right? So... You're not certain. I, no. I, I, be I believe that the Sin Energy may be the closest, but okay. I, I couldn't say that for sure. Well, that's so, so not to point to this specific case, I'm just using it as an example, but I'm, I'm hoping that as a city we try to be as deliberate as possible to finding businesses in Brockton in our tax dollars. I understand right. your point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councils. Any other, any other questions, Councils? Move to approve. a motion made. It's been properly right. seconded. That's right. That's right. All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Motion carries favorable. Thank you, Mr. Malley. <coughs> Stay up there, sir. Number seven. <laughs> Order transfer of $4,860 from city lots to building and grounds in order to fund the replacement of the video recorder used for surveillance of the Lincoln Street parking lot. Invited John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Robert H. Malley, Executive Director of Parking Authority. Okay, this, uh, the cameras that are in the B lot um, over behind the chamber building, All right, uh, that uh, system went in, uh, paid for by a grant uh, that built the parking lot also. Uh, the system costs like $48,000. What this will replace, the $4,800, is the um, computer and the 16-channel video recorder uh, that the files have become corrupted across the course of time uh, because we can't get the pictures. The cameras are still working, but we can't get the pictures from, off them uh, at the current time. So this uh, obviously wasn't budgeted. Motion recommend favorable. Second. 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 On the motion, Council? Yes, please. Um, Bonds on the motion. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Have there been uh, break ins or vandalism or anything, or is this more preventative or a deterrent? Well, it's both. We've, uh, we've cut uh, a couple of hit and runs, an incident at uh, one of the neighboring bars, um, okay. a couple of incidents of vandalism, one uh, tire slashing uh, across the five or so years that the things, the four years that the system's been in operation. Okay. So it, it does catch, it could catch something going on if, if it we was We even turned the cameras out at the end of the work week uh, to catch the stuff that happens off the, off the fringe while the lot's not being used. Okay, great. Thank you. Council, thank you. Council's motions were made <coughs> properly second. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, number eight, please. Order a transfer of $3,950 from the city garage to the building and grounds to fund the repairs of the lighting at the Adams Garage. Invited John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Robert H. Malley, Executive Director of Parking Authority. Malley. And this one uh, funded um, uh, the replacement of four boards, uh, circuit boards, a uh, bit large circuit boards in the garage, and some ballasts that went with the lamps to repair the lighting because it was getting tended dim in there. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? That's Question, cool. this may be for Mr. Condon. Uh, on those last two, I noticed we took the money out of city lots, and on this from city garage. Are they just all sub-accounts inside of the parking authority uh, enterprise yeah, account? Yeah, they, they, they are. There are two separate funds. Uh, one's from uh, revenues off the parking lots, and the other one's from the revenues from the parking garage. Two separate funds, and they're just appropriated from the funds. But they're all parking authority? Yes. And is that an enterprise account? or that's a No, it is not, it's but it's a uh, self-funded account. Self-funded account. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motions were made. Properly second in favor of all in favor. All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, number nine, please. Order. Transfer of $20,295 from the Personnel Department Personal Employee Benefits Unemployment Insurance to the Law Department Personal Services Other Than Overtime. This transfer is to provide funding for an additional position of part-time assistant city solicitor. Invited John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Philip C. Nazarella, Solicitor, Maureen Cruz, Personnel Director. 
Good evening, Mr. Connor, Ms. Cruz, Mr. Attorney Nazarella. Mr. Connor. Good evening. I can speak to the finances on this, and I think the city solicitor can speak to what he thinks is, is the purpose of it. But before we start on the finances, I want to say I misinterpreted the mayor's instructions on this. What he is looking to do is not to add an additional part-time city solicitor but to add an additional full-time city solicitor. So I think the intent is for one of the part-timers that is there now to move up to the full-time position and hire him behind it. That being said, it means that the pricing on this is incorrect. I'd need to give you another appropriation for another $15,000. So if you're favorably disposed, what I would propose is that on Monday night, I substitute an order which properly describes us as the funding for a full-time city solicitor for a half year and add the money in it and you can reject this one and, and act on that one if, if you're favorably disposed tonight i would hope you do it under suspension so we don't have to wait on it um, the pricing on it is basically as i costed it for one five months worth of a uh, part-time city solicitor uh, to get us through the end of june and it's an extra 15 to, to buy the uh, the full-time uh, position for the, for the same period of time i think the idea is and the city solicitor can speak on this more but the idea basically is that we're spending an awful lot of money right now on outside council and it is much cheaper uh, in terms of an hourly rate for us to have staff in-house to do that work it's hundreds of dollars an hour cheaper and we think we will uh, uh, get a better leverage of appropriated funds uh, by doing it in this fashion Pastor Dubois. Okay, Mr. Condon, I just have a couple questions. So there's going to be a new full-time city solicitor position. Yes. New full-time, okay. How many people are in the department now? The, the present, at present, in terms of legal staff, there's the city solicitor who is part-time. There is a full-time city solicitor and two part-time city solicitors. Who's the full-time? The full-time city solicitor is Caitlin Leach. And, and the two part-time are Kate Federoff and um, uh, Karen Fisher, I think her last name is. And then in addition to that, you have a paralegal. Yep. I'm just talking about so the just attorneys. The staff, just the attorneys. So that, that's your attorney staff. So the idea yeah. would be uh, that there would be an additional full-time position. I think the intent is for one of the part-timers to be promoted, but you have to speak to the city solicitor about that. Sure, that's fine. So I didn't, when was Karen Fisher brought on board? Is that recently? I didn't know that, that she, I don't know if she, I've She's been there for a while. How long do you think? Estimate. Six months. Six months. She, re she replaced the person who left. Excuse me? She's a replacement hire. There, there was a person. I think it was Gil. She replaced Gil. Is that correct? Okay. And so <coughs> the, the estimated cost for a new full-time city solicitor for a full year is how much? For a full year, a full-time city solicitor is just about 80-something thousand dollars, just under 90. And that's, um, does that include benefits costs? And no, that's the that? salary cost. Um, and then the benefits cost will be on top of that? Yes. Okay. So we're, you're asking for 20000 plus 15, so somewhere around thirty-five to fund this person for the next five months? Correct. And then it's going to be an additional $80,000 on the city solicitor's um, budget that, that you're hoping will be um, somehow reduce our out of out of um, consultant fees for that. But yes, that, I, I don't know that there would be a budget reduction, Counselor, because I think there is so much outside uh, legal work going on right now that it may be that we're, we're not even adequately funded, but we've got about a million dollars on that line item, and the idea would be that we'd get a better and more efficient use of it by a lot more of that work being done with in-house counsel, even with benefits and uh, Medicare tax hourly rate is probably a little over $100 and we're spending two, three, four hundred dollars an hour on outside counsel. So I, I'm not against this idea, yeah. but it just seems to fly in the face of everything we've been talking about with fire and police, where it's so much cheaper to fund overtime costs because then we don't get the problem of having to pay for their retirement mm -hmm. and, um, you know, yada, yada, yada. So right. now it seems like for attorneys, we can give them a retirement, but for police and fire, we say, no, you just have to work overtime. Well, there's a difference. Uh, the attorneys are not overtime compensated, uh, so the use of overtime funding to get additional staffing isn't isn't appropriate here. They're not they're not entitled to overtime. So to get the extra hours, you either work them more or you have an additional staff person. Well, that's how professional <coughs> jobs go. Like right. I work 80 hours a week and I get paid for 40 hours no matter how much I work in my right. professional job. And attorneys are, are right. definitely professionals, right? Right. Yeah. So. Um, we hope so. 
Yeah, so I just think that if we're going to, um, I personally think that we need more police and firefighters and the cost for their pension is something that I'm more willing to take on as a city councilor than the cost for another full-time city solicitor. Right, and, I, and we, we've had this discussion before, councilor, and I think it's pretty demonstrable that you can show up to a certain point it is cheaper to put overtime hours on the existing staff than it is for that kind of job than it is to hire additional staff mm -hmm. because their work schedule isn't as flexible. If you work a cop more than the stated hours in the contract for overtime, you must pay him overtime. It's not like a professional. In this case, you're able to work the person longer, but at some point there is a limit to it, and we think that this would be justifiable on the basis of greater efficiency in the budget. At some point on the overtime for fire and police, it's true that you're absolutely going to run into a limit on their ability to work it, and if you want more hours, you need more staff. Because right now we're looking at the potential of closing down fire companies because of our budget um, constraints every single year. We have the chief here talking mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. And I just think that, you know, this isn't against the, the, the solicitor's office at all because I think they do a wonderful job defending the city and their um, ultimate professionals. It's about a policy decision yes. that I find um, is just too bad because it seems like we're putting we're putting value and putting out another $80,000 for a full-time city solicitor at when we could be hiring another firefighter or another police officer and not incurring all that overtime. And if a city solicitor works overtime, you know, they're not out there saving people's well, lives. Well, I think, I think so if, they going around well, minute, if they get tired, they might just miss a comma or their syntax might not be correct in a sentence. But if a police or firefighter gets tired and they're working all this overtime because they have to, because they're not properly staffed, we have life life and death issues that they deal right. with every day. Right. Well, we're, we're in disagreement on that, but I will say this. If you add one more full-time city solicitor in that office, by orders of magnitude, you increase their staffing. If you add one firefighter, which is about what you'd buy for $80,000, or one cop, you get less than 1% increase in the staffing. So I think overtime is a better way to go up until a limit. In this office, I think this is a better way to go up until a limit. And I don't think it's an equivalent trade-off because of the difference in the function and the, the relative increase in staffing hours you get from this investment. I guess we'll just agree to disagree. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Dubois, thank you. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Dubois asked quite a bit of what I wanted to get, but I just want to get it that way. So by adding what will essentially be 80,000, I mean the 35 is, uh, right. is uh, just for the rest of the year. Now you say you'd come in Friday night, I mean, excuse me, Monday night with 15 more. Would that be coming out of the same, same pool of money as you're finding the 20,000? 20, 20, uh, for the next fiscal year? For, yes. It, for it'll, be, it'll be subject to the budget. No, I'm sorry, for, but right now we'd be voting oh, yes. on 20,000. Uh, yes. So when that would also be coming out of the unemployment insurance. Yes, because we haven't spent as much as we, we, as we budgeted. There is a surplus in that budget. It'll be coming out of that fund too, yes, Councilor. Okay, so theoretically, if we're to add $80,000, we should see, <coughs> I don't know what the number would be, but one and a half times or two times that or whatever reduction in our outside, outside uh, legal yes, fees. Yes, if there, if there weren't a backlog of work which otherwise isn't going to get done if we don't, don't do it. I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is that there is so much burden of legal work in that office right now it is unable to be accomplished by the present staff, and they go to outside counsel to do it. And if that work were diminishing, then you'd see a reduction in the outside counsel. But I think there are some projects going on right now that are going to not diminish, and this would simply mean we're not going to be spending more. Actually, and that's kind of, I do want to get now to Mr. Nazarella for kind of specifically about that. Phil, if you can step up. Uh, so right now you'd probably be taking one of the, uh, the uh, uh, part-time and I won't ask you who that's, you know, you've, you've right. managed the department and making her, I guess, would be full time because they're both, uh, and adding a new part time city sol solicitor. Right. Um, if, if I can just rewind for a, mom, a moment, <clears throat> the ordinance that was created in the wisdom of this, of this legislative council allowing for assistance to the city solicitor was created in about 1995. 1997, some 20 years ago. In that period of time, there's been not only an explosion of population in the city of Brockton, which brings about its own legal issues, but there's been an explosion in claims, litigation. Uh, there are forms of litigation that didn't exist 20 years ago. We weren't before the Mass Commission Against Discrimination in Boston. 
for half a day. We weren't in federal district court litigating major cases having major consequences financially. Uh, we weren't involved in union bargaining, which would take two of our attorneys a full day for months and months and months. And it, I cannot fairly ask these part-time attorneys to work full days because, as the uh, CFO said, they don't get compensated for that period of time. Uh, so the uh, areas, legislative matters we deal with, bargaining, contract review, um, there's extensive litigation, environmental law that requires specific counsel on the outside. Okay, well, actually, now, if I can hold on, that was going to be my next question. Are you looking for a specific, I mean, would the person coming in be, have you got specific issues that are falling through the cracks no, in the office? Or? No, no, because we need somebody who is well-versed in general matters. Even when we, we assign a, a case to outside lawyer, we don't abdicate responsibility of that case. We continue to monitor it. We have to be fully aware and informed of it because the ultimate decision about the course of litigation, uh, resolution of the case, uh, or settlement rests with my office. So it's not that that's gone, but it does take the man hours or person power hours off of our shoulder that we don't have to be standing in court in Boston all day long because we, we don't have that physical power. Most communities in uh, the Commonwealth that are half the size of Brockton have twice the amount of lawyers. So we have never even fulfilled what our ordinance allows us to do. We need to do that at this time. So by ordinance, the position is there. We're just strictly the talking about funding. position has been there. All we're asking that it be funded so we can bring that person in. And then I just have one last question. The part and this might be for Ms. Cruz. The part-time city solicitors, what do they get for benefits? Do they... They get full benefits? Yes, the assistant city solicitors, just like the legislative council, all get full benefits. They do. Okay. They don't work less than 19 and a half hours under Mass that's State. How, that's how that's measured under Correct. Mass Law? Correct. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nazarella. Thank you, Council. Council Stewart. Uh, thank you. This may be a question for uh, Mr. Condon and, and likely the city solicitor. Uh, my, so I think that the solicitor's office is understaffed, but frankly, probably every single office in the city is understaffed. Um, and so making choices around which office to put more investment in, I tend to think we should focus on economic development, which then creates more opportunity to then have the funds to invest in other offices. That's just my general stance. But um, one thing that can, I shouldn't say concern me, but what I would like to see from uh, Mayor Carpenter, I don't know if he is available at, for the next uh, FinCom meeting. I'm very supportive of his agenda. But so far what I've heard from him are uh, additional expenses. And I know he ran on a platform of lower taxes. So what concerns me is that I'm getting a lot of formal and, and informal requests that to me um, add up to more expenses. Um, uh, since he's taken office. So I'm, I'm not going to support this. And, and I, what I would like to do, Mr. Condon, is ask that you and the mayor come back. I'll do a resolve if I have to and sort of present to us what is your portfolio of next steps in terms of additional positions and what, those, what the purposes of those positions are so that I could see the bigger picture of what those expenses look for versus doing well, it in, in uh, piecemeal. Well, Councillor, I'm, I'm supportive of that. The, the problem is the mayor's in office for two and a half weeks, uh, and so what his full agenda in terms of turn, to trying to accomplish it and paying for it, I don't know, and we're about to go into budget development. So I suspect <laughs> that a good portion of what you're asking for, he wouldn't know until he begins to work through the details of the budget, budget at least in specifics. He may have some high-level ideas. Uh, I think... You know, my view on the city finances hasn't changed so much since last fall when everybody wanted to run me out of town. I still think we, we're short on dough, guys. And um, it's going to be hard to accomplish everything that wants to be accomplished and also not raise taxes. It's going to be hard to accomplish everything that everybody wants to accomplish, even if you do raise taxes. That's my view. Right. But I haven't had a chance to take the mayor through all of that stuff. And so, so my concern it's, would be... It's up, to, it's up to him to make right. those commitments, Councilor. So my concern would be to, to say yes to this and then have other requests later and not have a full yeah. picture of... He can't, it's hard to discern and make a choice if you don't know what the whole picture looks I, like. I agree which with is that. why I can't be supportive of this. That. My other... Maybe this is for the city solicitor. My understanding uh, for the outside council that we contract with is that uh, a lot of the work, uh, it's disparate work requiring disparate skills, legal skills. And so it's not possible to have a solicitor's office with the attorneys that have all the different types of skills we need, which is why we contract. So if we're going to put more money into 
um, a solicitor or assistant solicitor in the office, that doesn't sort of dissipate the need to have all these other contracts with these specialty firms? Not immediately, but I would anticipate down the road it would be. There are, uh, there's a great deal of work that we are doing now that was previously several years ago um, given out to outside counsel. Was, some of it was in the bargaining area. I think uh, the assistant city solicitors are, have risen to the skill level <coughs> to be handling that themselves. So I would anticipate in the future we would be able to continue through the education and experience of the assistants uh, be able to address those issues. The, the, time, the, the issue is not so much the, their ability to handle some of the subspecialties, it's the time involved. Again, assistants cannot be asked to work full-time days when they're part-time. So hence the reason that it's imperative I have someone appointed as full-time assistant city solicitor. Okay. And I think, oh, I think in terms of the bigger picture, I agree with you. Just in terms of what our choices are moving forward, it's very unclear to me, which is why I'm a little hesitant to act on this at this very moment. Um, I don't know if you, if you have something else to... No, I was, I was going to, as, as a side note, uh, the office has changed, too, in the last eight years. What I had intended, and I think I've accomplished, that, is that there is always an attorney in that office, so they are responsive, that person is responsive to legislative council members, department heads, or the mayor. Years ago, you could go in there, and there was really uh, less of a schedule. Sometimes there'd be lawyers, sometimes there wouldn't be. There's always an attorney there, and the other attorneys are either involved in research or uh, in litigation. Years ago, as I have been told, uh, contracts would sit on a desk and gather dust while departments would commence work without signed contracts. Today, this is, at this point in time, there is uh, a seven-day turnaround. When we get a contract, the review commented upon, resolved, and sent back to the department. So the efficiency level, I like to think, has increased quite a bit, but that has taken an awful lot of work, and I think with the addition of a full-time person, the efficiency level would even propel further um, to a level that uh, we would all be proud of. And I would have to say, with all, with every single experience I've had with your office has been a, a very professional, positive, productive one, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I had a question from Mrs. Mrs. Cruz concerning um, uh, so finding this new part-time assistant solicitor. I know the mayor is talking a lot about making certain that these different offices reflect uh, I mean, he says the diversity, I'm assuming he means racial diversity of the city, and I'm curious as to how is that translating into um, a recruitment plan or sourcing plan uh, that the city is ongoing to try to boost up the number of qualified candidates that, that are diverse? Well, Councillor, the position of assistant city solicitor is appointed by the city solicitor, uh, not by the mayor and not by the personnel department. Uh, with respect to what I've heard tonight, I believe they consider promoting someone existing. Uh, let me just say They're finding that a part-time person. They're going to for the full-time, the, the part-time, again, that, that is up to the city solicitor. Uh, let me just say that I know that when, the, when Phil Nazarella took office, attempting to find city solicitors, assistant city solicitors, to come to the city of Brockton, you have a residency ordinance, if you look at the salary that we pay these, these uh, lawyers, it was very difficult to obtain and fill the number of staff that he wanted. It took him, he went uh, quite a while waiting to find a qualified applicant. Um, Period, you mean? For, for uh, when he first came in. Is that correct, Phil? So, um, you know, it's, it's a, I mean, it's not a simple, um, position to fill. So maybe, it's, uh, and I know we're going to, I have on my agenda for uh, a coming up, upcoming finance meeting to talk about the residency law and the impact it has on hiring, uh, but a question for the city solicitor then. So what efforts are you making to uh, ensure you have a, a pool of candidates that reflect the, the city's diversity? Like what, what are, I mean, practically, what kind of strategies does your office use if you're not getting support from the personnel department? Well, again, we, we're limited to posting the job in the Brockton area, and it goes into uh, journals and periodicals beyond Brockton, Lawyers Weekly, for instance, and whoever applies and is willing to come into the city, uh, we, we take them as whoever comes before us. Uh, you know, but we, it's been very, very difficult to attract 
positions in that office because of the residency requirements, salary caps, um, lack of overtime. They uh, tend to do much better in private industry than they do in, you know, governmental law. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know quite how to answer your question other than I can tell you in, in the words of Red Auerbach, I don't care what size, shape, or color they are. If they can do play the game, they'll get the position. If they can... If they come in and they present themselves and they have the qualifications to do the job, they'll be considered. Well, I guess I'm, I'm just concerned. I, I appreciate that, except that if we're not recruiting in the right places, we're going to get this, this, the same kinds of people who are qualified, but there could be a whole pool of folks who are very qualified who are not hearing about the job. So, I, so maybe this is something I should take up with the mayor's office on exactly what does it mean to say you're trying to build a more diverse team, but it, I'm not hearing a clear way of making that real. That's really what I was hoping well, to hear. Well, I, I, in the past I've recruited right. in the, the journals, period, in, the, in the publications that would reach most lawyers. Besides, even I believe we tried Craigslist last time mm -hmm. okay. because right. we found it was very expensive to go into the legal journals. Right. So we tried the more uh, alternative uh, publications, and that... Um, quite frankly, did not bring a very diverse crowd. Okay. Great. All right. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Ianeri. I'm all set. You're all Mr. set, Councilor. Councilor Monaghan. I'm all set. Councilor Dubois. Mr. Nazarella, I just, uh, Attorney Nazarella, I just have a couple suggestions. So there's a black bar association and there's an Asian American bar association and both of them have websites that you could post job announcements on. I know this because I work at a civil legal aid agency mm -hmm. and we try to diversify and it is difficult. Um, but just maybe it will be different because you haven't hired someone in a while. But my agency is trying to hire someone right now and the starting pay is something like forty-five, fifty thousand dollars and they got like eighty resumes. So hopefully you'll have a better chance this time around. Oh sure, I'm open to um, exploring any type of yeah. avenue that will bring in you know, applicants. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Attorney Israel. I entertain a motion, Councils. Motion recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion has been made properly seconded in favor. Uh, all in favor of the motion. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Could I ask for a roll call vote? You may. You may. Madam Clerk, do you have the uh, alphabetical order? Yes. Okay. Can we take a roll call vote on this, please? Shirley Azak. No. Shana Barnes. No. Timothy Cruz. Yes. Uh, Michelle Dubois. No. Dennis Ianeri. No. Tom Monahan. Yes. Jazz Stewart. No. Paul Studensky. Yes. Robert Sullivan. Yes. Four yeas, five nays. Uh, motion fails. Unfavorable. A uh, question. Basil Stanisky. Does the motion fail or does it get sent back unfavorably? Favorable. It's going to be sent back. The, the motion failed, but it will go back unfavorably Unfavorable. to the full city council Monday night council. Thank you for clearing that. Thank, thank you. you. Can, I, can I just, for some clarification for myself? Council, you may. Okay, thank you. So when it comes back, it'll have the correct amount. That, right, uh, Mr. Condon? Yeah, what I would propose to do is to give a substitute order, which describes it as a full time position and adds. 15,000, so it'll be requested for you about 35,000 as opposed to 20,000. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, number 10, please. Order transfer totaling 54,200 from the finance personal services other than overtime, 30,000, and personal employee benefits unemployment insurance, 24,200, to the Office of the Mayor personal services other than overtime in order to provide funding for the transitional cost and compensation to the staff of the two mayors, separation costs for the outgoing administrative staff, and added salary costs for the new mayor's staff. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John Acon, and Chief Financial Officer, Marion Cruz, Personnel Director. Okay. Uh, I'll deal with the funding source first, and then we can get into the, uh, the description of the, uh, the need. Uh, basically, there are two sources for the, the requested uh, transfer. One is the same as the other, which is the uh, unemployment compensation uh, appropriation where there's a surplus. And the balance of it, $30,000, is coming from my office where there was a uh, secretary's position which was budgeted and filled for the beginning of the year. It's vacant now, and so that money is available. And that's the source of that transfer. That position won't be filled for the balance of the fiscal year to allow this to happen. I told the mayor I'd help out with this. In terms of the use of it, uh, the mayor is looking to do two things. First of all, the um, 
uh, two of the folks who were working in the office uh, under the prior administration are entitled to uh, the sale of whatever vacation time they had on the books and so there's about eleven thousand dollars of this which is going to compensate for those costs and then in addition to it there are additional staff costs in the mayor's office for the balance of this fiscal year uh, one of uh, two of them are for a little bit more money than the present uh, or the prior occupants uh, not a lot a few thousand dollars there but then there's an additional position in there which was not in terms of number of positions in the prior mayor's budget and that's what's driving these cost requirements for about fifty thousand dollars mr. chairman sorry mr. Connor what was that fifty grand oh, it's fifty four thousand dollars to, to cover all of those needs See you, Council Neary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Carney, can you share with us who the um, two people that are uh, receiving the, um, um, the separation costs from the past administration? Yes, it would be uh, Lauren DeFilippo and Mike Mullen. You don't have their separate cost? Uh, I'm sorry, Mesa and Mesa. There were three. There were three. I'm sorry, there were three. And Mesa, the, uh, uh, the, the other okay. assistant down there. Okay, those, those three. Okay, you don't have their actual separate uh, to what they would be receiving. You don't know that off the... Top of the head. top, of my head. it was about eleven thousand dollars across oh, the three. Okay, of them. okay, very good. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Council Dubois. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Mr. Condon, could you get us the breakdown of the separation costs between those two? You said two employees that three. add up to eleven thousand, or is it three, three? Three, three. So it's Lauren, Mike, and who? Maisa. Excuse me, Maisa. Mesa. So those three are 11,000, and then you said two people that are on staff are going to be making $2,000 more than their predecessors? A few, a few, not, a, not two, a few. How much more? A few. Uh, no. Off the top of my head, I don't have those da that data for you. It's a few thousand dollars on two positions. The job titles don't line up precisely. The mayor gets to staff his office uh, subject to appropriation as he sees fit in terms of salary and in terms of uh, titles and responsibility. But there are... There are more people in the office working than there were under Mayor Balzotti. The chief of staff is making a little bit more money. So he's one of them. Yes. And um, the, um, I don't want to name names in this form, but one is a, uh, an outreach individual who's making a little bit more money than I think Lauren was making prior. That's fine. I think that, you know, salary costs are public information. Anybody can go to the Internet and get them. They and can. this is our job, so I think it's only fair that, you know, if you didn't want to talk about it, you could have given us a breakdown on paper, and that would have been able to explain to us where this money is going. Right. And then we wouldn't you. be shirking our fiscal responsibilities to the taxpayers who elect us to just say, you know, we're being courteous to the employees because they want to know where their taxpayer dollars well, are going. Fair. Yeah. That's fair. So then, so if I take the 50... 4,000 and I subtract out 11,000 and then I subtract out 4,000 for the around two couple thousand each that's $39,000 is that one position there's an extra position in there which and is who not is that uh, the, the jobs don't line up exactly council I can't say it's this person versus that, per, that person I'm just saying there's an additional staff slot which is being funded and for five months at $39,000. Yes. yes, and there's an additional position beyond that, which is primarily being paid, will be primarily paid for by the cable uh, revolving fund, but there will be some assistance out of the general fund. Okay, so right now we have two positions that are getting paid more than the last administration, and then we have a new position that is how much a year, if you can estimate out, from 39000 for five months. I can't do it. Can you? 40 something thousand on an annual basis. So they're getting paid 39000 for five months, and for 12 months they're getting paid 40000 No. What are they getting paid for 12 months? They're getting paid, the positions are getting paid, one, pay, one is getting paid in the high 40s, one is getting paid in the mo low to mid 40s, and there's another position which is getting paid primarily out of the revolving fund, but some, some assistance from the uh, uh, general fund. I think that um, at this time, um, when my fellow counselors are done asking their questions, I think it's only prudent to postpone this until we get a list from your department that gives us the budget for this department so we know what we're going to be looking at next fiscal year because you have it right you have I a have budget the calculation John. yeah so um, if uh, if any other council is going to ask questions I'll, I'll refrain but otherwise I'd like to make a motion to postpone this till the next finance On the motion minute. I know council you okay. have a question I'm, I'm sorry and, and, and if you want council why don't you make the motion then I'll, I'll, okay. I'll answer to your, to your motion because I think you're, we're on the same page motion to postpone thanks for the motion I'm sorry. Just motion was made was it seconded it has seconded. Seconded. seconded seconded 
Council stood on the motion. So, Mr. Condi, yeah, similar to the previous discussion for me, uh, I think, relatively speaking, these are small numbers, and it, we, all, we also know that the mayor's office has been historically understaffed, and so I'm supportive of whatever the new mayor wants to do to make sure he has the right people in place. Uh, it's just my only concern would be having this come at us piecemeal, and I would really like to see what, whether maybe it's not the plan for the a future that arcs an uh, entire year, but what is the plan for the next you know, six months or something so that I understand what choices I'm making? Yeah, I understand that, Councillor. Okay, I, I thank do, you. I, I do understand. I'll, I'll, I'll relay that to them. Very Councilor, I, I thought I had a backup, I've got a stack of materials, but <coughs> the one that I don't have is this particular order of that information. I can get it to you by Monday night, or if you choose to postpone, we'll get it next time. There's a motion on the floor to postpone properly second. All in favor of postponement. I think Council Councilor Neary wanted to speak. Yep. Neary, I, 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 did want, I did want to speak on the motion Go ahead, sir. Uh, because I, I come on the same heels as what my colleague from Ward 6 is, is thinking in, in concerns of this particular issue. And I also hear what my Councilor at large uh, a member is saying. But uh, I think we all need to keep in mind here that um, I know we're into a new administration. Uh, but I, I see here that we're already increasing personnel while we're starting out with the new administration. And, and I hope that everyone else is beginning to see this. I hope that the people at home and the taxpayers are beginning to see this as well. Because I, I think we're starting to go in, into a different direction. And I'm not trying to be rude to the new administration. Um, it, it, be it new, yes, the mayor's staff over the years has been uh, probably a, a little bit thinner than what has been seen over years previous to when I was involved. But I still think that even he has to be careful of, of what he's doing in, in placing people within his department because now you're going to set a presence to what other departments' needs are, and then when we go to plan a budget, where are we going to be? Okay, increasing the tax dollar, which everybody says we can't do. I, I mean, come on, let's, we've got to start paying attention here, and, and I'm going to start now. I'm going to be one of the, I guess, one of the biggest critics, but um, in any case, uh, at this point, I, I support the motion, and I think it should be postponed until everything's put in front of me, number-wise. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Neary. Councilor, is anybody else on the motion? I'm going to take a vote. A motion to postpone, and it's been properly seconded. All in favor of postponement until, Councilor, until a definitive date. Till when? Until the next Finance Committee meeting, and hopefully we'll have that breakdown by then. But if we don't, I'll, I'll motion to postpone it again. Motion to be made until the next Finance Committee. All in favor? All opposed? Motion is postponed to the next FinCom meeting. Thank you, Mr. Cornyn. Uh, Councilor Cruz. I uh, make a motion to take items 11 through 15 collectively. Second. second. Motion is made. Uh, properly second to take collectively. Again, Council, it's just a piece of information. These are routine orders. We do them every single year. Uh, numbers 11 through 15. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could read them, please. Order. Rules and regulations governing motor vehicles for the hire under Chapter 159A for the carrying of passengers. Order. Assessors to act as agents of City Council in matter of apportionment of betterments. Order. Clerk to give notice of hearings before Council. Order regulations governing the operation of hawkers and peddlers within the city of Brockton. And 15 order, pawn brokers are to deliver a list of purchased or pawned articles to the chief of police. Council, I hit the motion. Move to approve. Second. second. Motion is made to approve properly. Second. All in favor of, of uh, putting the forward favorable. All opposed. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like the motion to have numbers 16 through 17 postponed to the next uh, finance committee meeting. Second. second. Council Stewart uh, has made a motion again. He's the author of these resolves to postpone uh, number 16, number 17 on tonight's agenda. It's been properly seconded. Postponed to the next FedCon meeting. All in favor of postponement? All opposed? Uh, both number 16 and number 17, Madam Clerk, are postponed to the next FedCon meeting. <coughs> Councils, again, uh, if you get any calls from constituents, Brockton Public Schools are canceled tomorrow because of snow. Again, City Hall here will be closed tomorrow because of the snowstorm. No rubbish pickup tomorrow. Councils, it will be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they'll come an hour early to catch up if needed. Monday, plowing began tonight at 8 o'clock. They did pre-treat earlier today, Councils. And again, uh, remember, to everybody that has a car in the City of Brockton, the emergency parking man is in effect tonight. As of 6 p.m. Council, is anything else before us tonight? Drive carefully. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs> Bye, everyone.